From those, I coined my own definition of success in 1934. I choose to define it as peace of mind attained only through self-satisfaction in knowing you made the effort to do the best of which you're capable. And you're the only one that knows that, you know. Nobody else knows it. You, you, you can fool others, but you can't fool yourself. And it's like character and reputation. Your character, you're, you're the only one that knows your character. Your reputation is what you're perceived to be by others, but your character is what you really are. I was raised on a small farm in southern Indiana, and Dad tried to teach me and my brothers that you should never try to be better than someone else. I'm sure at the time uh, he did that, I didn't, it didn't. Well, somewhere, I guess, in the hidden recesses of the mind, it popped out years later. Never try to be better than someone else. Always learn from others. And never cease trying to be the best you could be. That's under your control. I had to get across to that. My punishment will tell you, never heard me mention winning. Never mention winning. My idea is that you can lose when you outscore somebody in a game. And you can win when you're outscored. I've felt that way on certain occasions at various times. And I, w I just wanted to be able to be able to hold their head up after a game. I used to say that when, when a game is over and you see somebody that didn't know the outcome, I hope they couldn't tell by your actions uh, whether you outscored an opponent or the op opponent outscored you. Um, uh, and th that's what really matters. If you make your effort to do the best you can regularly, uh, the results will be about what they should be. Not necessarily what you'd want them to be, but they'll be about what they should. And only you will know whether you can do that. And that's what I wanted from them uh, uh, more than anything else. And as time went by and I learned more about other things, I, I think it worked a little better uh, as far as the results. But I wanted the, the score of a game to be the uh, byproduct uh, of these other things and, and not the end itself. I believe it was... Um, uh, and, mm -hmm. One great philosopher said, no, no, Cervantes. Cervantes said, the journey is better than the end. And, and, and I like that. I, I think that is. It's getting there. Sometimes when you get there, there's almost a letdown. But it's getting there that's the fun. I like to, as a basketball coach at UCLA, I liked our practices to be the journey. And the, the game would, would be the end. The end result. And I'd like to go up and sit in the stands and, and watch the players play and see whether I'd done a decent job uh, during the week. I, I, there again, it, it's getting the players to get that self-satisfaction, knowing that they've made the effort to do the best of, of, of which uh, uh, they are capable. That uh, you get stronger uh, physically through weights, diversity. You get stronger mentally through increasingly difficult subjects in school. You don't start out with calculus, you start out with arithmetic. Yes. And I think we get stronger uh, morally and spiritually through, uh, through adversity to yes. some extent. So, and yet we do fear it. We don't want adversity, and yet it, that's what makes us better. We should learn from it, and, and uh, we certainly uh, uh, should not fear it. You can't get stronger, say, in an athletic point of view, if you constantly are playing inferior opponents. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you may start playing to their level. Yes. You've got to be challenged uh, to improve. Part of my job, I felt, as a teacher, was to challenge the students under my uh, supervision. The two most important words uh, in life itself, in my opinion, are love and balance. Well, I'm not going to talk about love here. We could talk about that for hours, of course. But I am going to talk about balance. To effectively play the game of basketball requires balance in so many ways. You have to have physical balance to properly and quickly execute the fundamentals. And the whole game is the execution of the fundamentals in reality. But you can't have physical balance without emotional balance. You can't have emotional balance without mental balance. But when you think about the game itself, you have to have a squad balance, you have to have rebound balance, you have to have defensive balance, you have to have offensive balance. Balance is just an all-encompassing word. You must have it in, in so many aspects of the game if it's going to be played and played well. These youngsters aren't perfect. They are learning. And you should be helpful uh, to them and not be critical. Now, we must have criticism to an extent. 
uh, we must be told how to do things and how to do things properly. But we criticize not to punish, and we must keep that in mind. We criticize to help, uh, to correct, to prevent, to improve. And if we will do that and show the youngster we're really interested, then I think the youngster will have, uh, will come closer, let's put it that way, to uh, developing uh, to his uh, potential. Now, if they don't have the interest, don't force them into that just because you're interested in it. Let them have the interest.